Welcome to this Deep Lizard course on deep learning fundamentals. I'm Mandy and I'll be your instructor for this course. If you are brand new to the field of deep learning and want to learn all about artificial neural networks and how they're applied, then this course is for you. Throughout this course, we'll be covering the concepts that are fundamental to the field of deep learning and artificial neural networks. With the skills and knowledge learned here, we'll gain a foundational understanding for what deep learning is, how it's applied, and the intuition for how we can make use of deep learning ourselves in code. Deep learning can be, and is already, applied in many different fields and real-world tasks. In fact, one of the earliest and most popular applications of deep learning has been in image classification. With image classification, we pass in an image to a deep learning algorithm, and then the algorithm returns to us what it thinks that image is. We'll work with image classification a lot in this course, so don't worry if you're not already familiar with it, we will be covering it in full detail. But image classification tasks are only the tip of the iceberg for the field of deep learning at large. We're already able to do so much with deep learning technologies and we'll be able to do even more in the future. Here we have just a few popular applications of deep learning that already exist in our world today. For example, here in this first image, we have an example of object detection going on where the deep learning algorithm is detecting all of the different types of objects in this image. Self-driving cars make use of this technology already to detect the different objects in their field of view as they're driving. How about recommendation systems? You know, the systems that recommend to us what to watch next, like on YouTube or Netflix, for example. Oftentimes, these systems are making use of deep learning and machine learning technologies to make these recommendations to us as well. As another example, have you ever heard about or seen an artificially intelligent agent play a game? Using deep reinforcement learning, which is a subfield of deep learning, we can train artificially intelligent agents to play games. And researchers have actually trained these agents to play games better than humans. Some of these games that artificially intelligent agents have played better than we have include chess and Go and multiple Atari games, as well as Dota 2, which is what this screenshot is here. As another example, check out these people here. They look just like typical normal humans, right? Well, actually, these images were generated by an artificial neural network and are not images of actual existing people. This was achieved through the use of a generative adversarial network, otherwise known as a GAN, which is a specific type of artificial neural network in the field of deep learning. These types of networks can be used for many cool and creative things, and image generation is just one of those things. So these are just a few of the popular applications of deep learning that are currently in use today. If you're interested in understanding these systems and how these technologies work, or perhaps you're interested in making use of artificial neural networks yourself for maybe new products or services or just a project of your own, then it's greatly important that you first gain a foundational understanding of the fundamental topics in this field of deep learning. And good news, this course will help you get just that. So let's start getting into the details of the course itself. The overall objective of this entire course is to build that foundational understanding of the fundamental topics in the field of deep learning. Since we'll be starting from the absolute basics, this course is great for beginners and requires no formal prerequisites. In many of our lessons, we'll be using pseudocode to demonstrate how these newly introduced deep learning concepts that we'll be learning about can potentially be applied in code. By using pseudocode, we can demo these topics in a programmatically intuitive way without having to depend on any specific API or programming language. And therefore, we won't necessarily need any previous programming experience to be able to understand these pseudocode examples. Now, with that being said, we do have coding-focused courses on deep learning already available on deeplizard.com. 
If you're brand new to deep learning, then we recommend you starting with this course first and then progressing on to those code-focused deep learning courses after you complete this one. In this course, we have many resources available to ensure your success at learning and understanding all of the fundamental topics in the field of deep learning. For each new topic covered in the course, we will have a video lesson as well as a fully written blog or set of lecture notes for that corresponding lesson on deeplizard.com. You'll also find on deeplizard.com that we have quizzes following each lesson that you can use at your own pace to test your understanding. Also, both the video and written portions of the lesson make use of intuitive graphics to help aid in the understanding throughout the course. These graphics are handmade by me and are similar to the ones that you're already seeing in this episode right now. For some topics, we even have interactive demo applications that you'll be able to make use of and interact with. So we have all of these resources that we'll be utilizing in this course, and they're all available on deeplizard.com. So now let's talk about what exactly we'll be learning in the course. So perhaps you've already started your own attempts at researching the field of deep learning. And within the first reading, you might have come across a ton of new terms that seem really intimidating. Maybe you've already encountered some of these things like gradient descent and backpropagation and convolutions and hyperparameters and perceptrons. On the surface, this seems like an overwhelming amount of new technical information to take in all at one time. But don't worry, because in this course, we will be covering all of these topics piece by piece, one step at a time to build a strong foundation of the deep learning fundamentals for ourselves. So here on the screen, we can see that we have many things that we will be learning in this course. And these are just the high level bullet points of all of the new topics we'll be covering. So we'll just quickly touch on these points here so that you can have a general understanding of the topics we'll be covering in this course. But do note that you can get much more detail about every topic we'll be covering in every single lesson by viewing the full syllabus that's available on deeplizard.com. So we'll be starting out by understanding the general relationship between the fields of artificial intelligence and machine learning and deep learning. And then we will learn about all of the components that make up artificial neural networks. And after we know about that, then we'll learn the steps involved with training these networks. And with that comes the topics of optimization and gradient descent and backpropagation that we make use of during the training process. We'll also be learning all about the learnable parameters that the neural network learns during the training process, as well as the various types of data sets that we make use of in deep learning. We'll learn to understand how we can detect problems during the network training process, and we'll learn techniques to improve the training process when we encounter these problems. We'll also gain an understanding for the different categories of learning, including supervised, unsupervised, and semi-supervised learning. And we'll be learning a lot of information for how to work with and process image data for neural networks. We'll spend some time gaining an understanding of all of the components involved in a convolutional neural network, or CNN, which is one of the most popular type of deep neural networks in the field of deep learning. And we'll learn how exactly these CNNs process image data through the use of convolutions in their networks. We'll also spend some time learning to understand the types of problems that can occur during CNN training, as well as potential solutions to these problems. We'll also learn about a cool concept called transfer learning, which allows us to take knowledge gained from one task and apply it to a new one. So as we mentioned, these are just the high level bullet points of some of the topics that we'll be touching on in the course. We will be learning much more than what's covered here because there are so many details that are packed into each one of these bullet points. So we have a lot to cover and a lot to learn. Again, be sure to check out the full syllabus on deeplizard.com to view all of the details for how exactly each lesson is broken down. I hope that you're looking forward to this course as much as I am. So let's jump in and I'll see you in the next one.
Hey, thanks so much for watching this episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. To see more content from us, check out our second channel called The Blizzard Vlog on YouTube. And be sure to check out the corresponding blog for this episode on deeplizzard.com for additional resources. And while you're at it, consider joining the Deep Blizzard Hive Mind where you'll gain access to exclusive perks and rewards. Thanks for contributing to Collective Intelligence. I'll see you next time.